I think the public probably knows some about what the Raptor Center does. Um, I think a lot of them, they have kids that come to the Raptor Center for school trips and things, so they learn at least about our education birds. We have about a thousand raptors come in to the Raptor Center every single year. Um, most of them are bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, great horned owls, and then we have some less frequent species as well. There are a lot of different reasons that birds come into the Raptor Center, but I would say about 90% of them have had some type of interaction with humans. And a lot of those reasons include they were either hit by a car, they flew into a window as they were migrating. A lot of the great horned owls, they'll get caught in soccer nets while they're hunting. And there's a lot of human-wildlife interaction going on there. The Raptor Center has an incredible network of volunteers. We have over 300 volunteers that work in the clinic, with the flight crew, with education, um, and we really wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. The Raptor Center is associated with the university and we're incredibly grateful for the opportunities that that allows us for research. But the university and the state, they don't fund us financially. We're based on philanthropy, so we really are reliant on our amazing volunteers and donors to let us do what we do here. I think people would be surprised about just how much work it takes to take care of these birds. Just the sheer amount of work that it takes to get one bird from the door and back out again is incredible. It's not just quick in and out. My name is Annette Allman, I'm 29 years old, and I'm a wildlife veterinarian and research assistant at the Raptor Center for Partners for Wildlife. One of my favorite parts about treating birds in the clinic is just getting to see these animals up close. Um, they have some incredible adaptations, their feather patterns and everything that you just don't get to appreciate when they're out in the wild. And I'm really grateful that I get to see those things. We are currently working with Medtronic. They've lent us a few devices. Um, it's called the Reveal Link Implantable Cardiac Monitor. And it's a monitor that in humans, they place permanently under the skin. With raptors, we're able to just place it on the skin since we are doing it temporarily. So right now, we've been working with bald eagles, testing if we can find a way to monitor their heart rates. And currently, we don't have a good non-invasive way of measuring heart rates in raptors. Um, we know by experience that if you handle a raptor, you restrain them automatically, that is a stressful event, so their heart rate increases. Um, so we don't have a way of knowing what does their heart rate do when we're not handling them. So by having this device that Medtronic is working with us on, we're able to see what does their heart rate do when they're in a flight room, when they're sitting in a cage, um, but our goal is to link physiologic stress with behavioral stress and find a way that we can minimize stress for these patients while they're under our care.
Raptors are incredibly important in the environment. Um, they do a lot of rodent control with eating rodents that are affecting agricultural fields. Eagles and vultures do a lot of scavenging of carcasses that have died naturally. Um, so it's really important to get them back out there so that they can play that role in the ecosystem. When handling and treating the raptors, you have to be incredibly careful, both for your sake and for theirs. So they have very strong beaks and very strong talons that can injure you, but you can also injure them if you grab their legs too roughly or if they flap their wings while you're holding on to them and they hit their wing against something. They can either break their wing or they can break their feathers, so you have to be incredibly careful. We take blood samples from every bird that comes in, as long as they're stable enough for us to take a blood sample when they show up. And we do that for a lot of reasons. It gives us a good overall systemic signs of health. So do they have a high white blood cell count with signs of infection or inflammation that we may need to treat? Um, do they have a low red blood cell count? Are they anemic? Do they need a blood transfusion or iron? Um, it gives us a lot of ideas about what may be going on with them and what types of things that we need to be treating. So anytime we have a bird that comes into care, um, we place what we call a tail protector. That's a little plastic sheath um, that we tape to the feathers. It helps to keep their tail protected and keeps their tail feathers safe um, because when they're in a cage, sometimes they can bend or break them and we wanna make sure that they have a pristine set of flight feathers before we release them. The owl that had leg injuries, the reason that bird came to us is because it had actually been trapped in a leg hold trap put out by someone hoping to trap something else. Unfortunately, these traps aren't specific, so sometimes you catch a great horned owl and it gets injured. It had some pretty nasty wounds on its feet and its ankles. We were able to treat those um, and get away any of the infected material and get the bird on some good antibiotics and pain meds. And then we've been doing wound care and bandage changes but so far it's doing pretty well um, and we're hoping that it'll make um, it to release pretty soon. When the raptors have been in a cage for several weeks, sometimes months, depending on their injury, a lot of the time their flight muscles have kind of deteriorated since they haven't been using them. So in order to get them fit to get back into the wild, we do some flight reconditioning. Um, we call it creancing, so we attach leather inklets um, to their legs and then we'll take them out on a line and we'll actually toss them. Our flight crew is very well trained and they'll do several passes back and forth in order to get them fit. Um, sometimes they have to go out once a week, sometimes two or three times a week um, and they'll continue that process until they're strong enough to be able to fly and be released again. I think the toughest part about working at the Raptor Center is that we can't save everyone, even if we had all the money in the world. Some animals are just too far gone, and I think teaching people about these animals so that we can get them into the clinic sooner or we can prevent them from getting injured in the first place, educating them about things like 
for example, if you see roadkill on the side of the road, um, slow down, there might be a raptor that's about to try and eat from it and scavenge. Or if you're hunting, don't use lead bullets because an eagle could eat from that gut pile and get lead poisoning as a result. I think the most rewarding part about my job is when I get to do a release for a patient that I've been treating for months. When a bird is released, I just feel a really strong sense of accomplishment that we were able to get them back out there. They're just incredible predators, and seeing that is just an amazing experience. All right, everybody, let's start at three. And look at that. <laughs>